Hey, welcome back to The Boring Show. Uh, I'm Andrew Brogdon from the Flutter team. And I am Matt from the Flutter team as well. Yeah. So, um, today we're going to take a little bit of a detour from what we have been working on, which was a Hacker News Reader app. Uh, and we're going to develop a plugin uh, to see how, you know, check that out, see how it works. And we also will have a guest star later. One of the engineers from the Flutter engineering team is going to mm -hmm. drop by to talk about some internals with us. Uh, so that'll happen a little bit later on. But for right mm -hmm. now, um, plugins, they are a good thing. So plugins, we're going to interface from our Dart code on the Flutter side mm -hmm. to platform specific code on the Android and or iOS side. Mm -hmm. So are we going to check out iOS, Android, both today? What's the plan? I figured we'd start with just making the plugin package, um, okay. which most of that is, you know, you get started with a template. The, the Flutter tool can do that for you. Uh, we can define the Dart interface for the mm -hmm. plugin to say how people can interact with it. And um, we'll probably go into Android at that point and do the native implementation on Android. And if we have time, we can look at doing uh, the iOS implement implementation too. So maybe, you know, make a, a cross-platform mm -hmm. plugin. Um, and I was kicking around some ideas earlier. I wanted something sort of simple that we could knock out fairly quickly, but okay. that didn't already exist. Mm -hmm. And I came up with the idea of a barometer plugin. Nice. Okay, so we're going to need uh, like latest Pixel phones, Samsung phones, and whatnot all have a sensor in there for mm -hmm. barometers. Altitude. No, yes. pressure. It's pressure, and thereby sort of correlates with altitude. Um, I've heard it's for GPS location. Like you can get like a height that helps you get a more accurate GPS location oh, that's cool. from so the radio. I don't know that for a fact. RF engineers in the audience, you know, feel free to correct me. I've heard that though. Um, so we're going to uh, <laughs> put this in the Flutter package management. If we can, yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, if you know, assuming it works. Um, but yeah, there is. I checked Pub, you know, the Dart uh, package okay. manager to see if one of these already existed. I didn't see one. Uh, there might be one that has it as part of more, you know, other functionality, but nothing for like a, hey, what's the mercury today kind of a um, barometer plugin. So. So we're going to have a height of mercury. Yes. Millibars, I nice. think, is what it's measured in. I think millimeters of mercury, something like that. I'm from Europe, so I think it's millimeters. There you go. I could be wrong. <laughs> it's been a long time since I was a physics major. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to switch over to because we have a guide for this. We have a guide for doing we platform do. channels. Flutter.io slash platform dash channels. And I have done a little bit of platform channels work before. Uh, I started on the mobile ads team, of course, and so mm -hmm. I've done a little bit of work on the Firebase AdMob plugin for Flutter. The problem there is that I didn't set that up, and I was just sort of, you know, when you come along late to a project, and you're just kind of like adding to something that already works, and it's, you know, it's already been architected for you. Here, that's not the case. Um, so we'll have that journey to go on together. Um, but, um, so the, the guide here has some good explanation of how platform channels work. I'm not going to go into that uh, here, but I do suggest giving it a read. Mm -hmm. um, even if you don't really intend to make a package of your own or a plugin of your own, it's still good to know about method channels and how they work. Um, but let's go down here. So to first thing I need to do is actually create a plugin, right? Okay. So, so we can do this from the Flutter command line app. Mm -hmm. Command line app, right? Mm -hmm. And I know there's like creating a plugin down here somewhere. Yeah, there's creating a package and creating a plugin, and they are two different. Uh, they are two different steps. Create a new app project. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong guide, so that's that's right. fun. <laughs> We've already hit our first problem. <laughs> um, Hold on one second. Uh, it's flutter, create, and then there's a dash dash template that you use. Developing packages and plugins. There we go. So separate guide, flutter.io uh, slash developing dash packages. And here we go. All right, so there's packages, and I'm interested mm -hmm. in doing a plugin. So I do flutter create, I give it an org, a yep. template, and a name. OK, so what do we? What do we put our org down as? Do we have an org? Com dot or io dot flutter maybe? Are we allowed to use that? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, we can always change it later. Yeah, on. that's true. So let's okay, just we'll go for io dot flutter. See there what happens. Go. All right. So flutter create. I'm just going to grab this into my template or my terminal here. Handy tip if you are ever uh, creating a flutter app 
that you want to release onto the Play Store or the App Store. Always set your org initially because you can change it afterwards, but you have to search through a whole bunch of Android and uh, iOS templates and XML files and whatnot. <laughs> and there is always one that you will forget to update <laughs> and spend hours trying to work out why your stuff doesn't compile Because it's been like base 64 encoded or something. I, I've, I've managed to do it a couple of times, but it's not yeah. pleasant. <laughs> well, you have to learn SED, right? It's like the... Your, your Linux foo is far stronger <laughs> than my Linux foo. I didn't say I knew how to use it. I just know <laughs> that it exists. <laughs> All right, so I ran Flutter Create, and this is going to uh, use one of the templates to uh, spit out sort of a example project for. Or, uh, okay, let's take a look at this. So I've got, let's see, lib. I've got an example made for me. That's pretty cool. Uh, iOS and Android, which is where the native code will go for this plugin. And so the interesting thing I discovered when I first wrote my plugin is is that the plugin can get built inside the main project, but you use the example then to build an app, which we'll use it to try it out. Okay. And it's just need to remember not to uh, not to intermix those two pieces. Okay. So let me pull up IntelliJ then, and I'm going to import this project. Mm -hmm. Create from existing sources. Here we go. I would like to overwrite it. And got some Android stuff in here, which I would kind of expect. Let me do that. So that'll give me a Flutter project, and it'll know about my Android source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the manifest. Some of the nuances of using IntelliJ I don't have down yet, especially for stuff like this, because you can have all these you know, sub-projects to your projects going. So what has that given us to start off with? So let me see what we got. So we have, cool. do I get actual source? Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. OK. So let's see what I got here. I have, let me close it back up. So I've got a lib, just like I would with any package. Mm -hmm. I've got, this is sort of the main file for my package. Except that the one thing it doesn't have is a main function, because yeah. this can never be executed. That's true. Which is why it's not main. There you go. Um, so this is just going to export some things. I've got, it's got its own pub spec. Mm -hmm. right, let me make this a little bigger. Oh, look at that. It's got Flutter plugin. Mm -hmm. It's got the Android package. It's got the plugin class. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so this, I know, is worth paying attention to. Um, so you have classes on the other end. You have Dart code, and it's going to be sending messages to Java or iOS code. Mm -hmm. And you have to have some way of sort of knowing what to go look for when Dart's like, hey, i got to go find somebody to listen to me on the native side. Um, and so I believe on Android, it's going to be looking for io.flutter.barometer.barometer plugin. That's the name of the class that it's going to be looking for on the Android side? It's going to be looking in the Android package. You're going to have a... You're already going to have a template for the plugin. So you've got so java.io.flutter.barometer. Oh, let me set up an SDK here. Is that going to make all the ugly lines go away? Maybe not. Interesting. All right. So I do have Java in here, even mm -hmm. though uh, IntelliJ is having trouble finding it. Interesting. Looks like it's using a different path. Open for editing in Android Studio. Hmm. All right. So we can come back to that in a second. Um, but this is the Java code that's going to be listening on the other end. Mm -hmm. And so it's got barometer plugin and io.flutter.barometer. So those match. What's in my pub spec matches the class name that it's mm -hmm. looking for on here. Interesting. Yeah, so you need to be careful with this because there's two um, Flutter or there's there's the plugin and then there's the example app as well, mm -hmm. and I've made that mistake of getting confused by that. Close. As always, uh, it's an adventure on the boring show. So I know, I know that 
mean, the file's got to work. So let's go, let's go back here for a second. I can always pull this open in a text editor and mess with it. Let me make sure I can build this and it works. So that's always a good thing if you can just build it right out of the box and it works. Mm -hmm. um, is it getting confused because the path is Java? I think it, maybe that's the deal. And there's some setting in here now where it's like expecting yeah. class packages to uh, follow that. The other thing that you might want to do is if you want to use Kotlin, make sure to specify um, Kotlin when you're doing Flutter Create. Oh, that's right. It's a command line switch. Yes. Right? I mean, we can manually change it. It's easy enough to add Kotlin to, an, uh, mm. to a Java-based um, uh, Android app, mm -hmm. but um, easy just to get it set up from the very, very, very beginning if you want to use Kotlin. And the same goes for Swift or Objective-C on the iOS side. So this won't run a standalone, right? Because this is this is a plugin, right? So it's not really meant to. So this is going to compile. Up the example app you can run, and then that will run your package, just like yes. somebody consuming it. They have their own app that's going to run, and in their pub spec, they would reference this package and get the code that way. So the way I've played with this before is I've actually had two IDEs open, one for my plugin and then one for my example, and I can flip between the two, do the oh. changes in the test. Interesting. Um, might not be the ideal way, but I was using um, Visual Studio Code for my Flutter app, and That's I was right, using yeah. Android Studio for the Android side of things. I haven't written an iOS plugin. <laughs> That'll be fun. That will be um, fun. I did some iOS stuff for, again, for the AdMob one, but um, that was about it. I didn't have to set it all up in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the example straight out of the box, I believe, is just checking the platform version, um, and that's all it's mm -hmm. doing. It's not so, I mean, this didn't just hang up on me. What does the example app show in its main? Is that what you're running? Looks like I have a lot of Flutter stuff. We've done a lot of episodes. i got all this stuff on my emulator. OK. Let's stop over here. Let's try that again. So IntelliJ is your... Um, ID of choice for Flutter? Yeah, I feel like I, I need to know one reasonably well. Mm -hmm. So There we go. OK, so it's running. Cool. We got running on Android 8.1.0. Wait, where is, uh, where's Pi? <laughs> I have Pi on my Pixel. Where I haven't downloaded Pixel? the new, uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't downloaded the new um, uh, em emulator images, though. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little behind the be times released. here. Um, How would people like to watch us download emulator images yeah, for the next be 15 minutes? <laughs> Just go in the back, make a protein shake, you know, do some other vacuum, clean up the studio here. Um, okay, so we have we have code that's running, so that's good. And our example, getting back to what we were supposed to be talking about a second ago. So our example here is main. Mm -hmm. And let's see. So it's a stateful widget. And let me make this bigger, get rid of you. So I have a stateful widget that's in its state. So it's got this init platform state that it's calling. And so that is going in to get. That's using your plugin, right? Yes. So that's going into my plugin. And everything coming out of the plugin is probably going to be a future because all communication from Dart to platform specific is always asynchronous. Because you're always on different threads. You're always going to be, and you're not going to want to block the Flutter thread while you wait for some goodness knows how long this will take platform message. No. That's a good way to give your app the stutters. So, um, OK. And it's using set state then just to output the, uh, yeah. And this will work equally well on the uh, iOS simulator because mm -hmm. I'm sure it gives us the same right. um, boilerplate on uh, <laughs> in probably Objective-C. So that's if I can I drill down right into this to get to my plugin. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Okay. So here's the plugin code. And so here it's defining a method channel with the same name as the plugin right there. The method channel is I think purely the name is purely optional. You can call it anything. And so it's sort of just a string identifier, right? Yeah. Okay. And then here, let's see, so it has one getter that's returning a future and it's also a static. And that's um returning the string that comes back from 
get platform version. So that's it's using the method channel to invoke a method mm -hmm. by name with no arguments, as far as I can tell. Yep. And so something's got to be listening on the other end. So there's going to be a Java f method called. No, there's going to be a listener where we can look at the invoke method name, and then we can probably call the other right. method on that. And that should be this, which is the ugly. This is looking ugly right now. Um, I almost want to open this in another editor real quick. There we go. So today, so far, we've used IntelliJ. <laughs> Uh, we've fired up Android Studio, and now we're firing, now we're firing up, up Sublime, Sublime Text. There we go. Um, vote for Andrew to fire up Atom. Uh, <laughs> Vim, I would personally vote for there myself. Um, so what does it look like? Yeah, we have uh, Emacs. Which no oh, Emacs, no Vim. Yeah. Yes, let's start that argument show. Okay. <laughs> so here's the Java code as it stands, uh, open in our other editor. And so here we have a barometer plugin class mm -hmm. in the package IO Flutter Barometer. And so this has a static method called register with. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, is the entry point for the plugin. So this gets called for before anything else to so say, get yourself ready so I can send you method channel calls. Yeah. If you look at your example, you're probably going to be calling that register with at some point. I think the engine calls this. Does the engine call it? We, we're, we're going to talk with Chinmay later uh, in, our, in our little segment, uh, our guest segment, and, and he'll have some details on this because I think he wrote some of it. Um, but we have a method channel. We're registering the method channel mm -hmm. called barometer. Mm -hmm. And then we're and going so to that, have... That matches back over here, right? So in our, not in the example, in our... If you look at your... Those strings match. But if you look at your example um, project, Mm -hmm. There's going to be, in the Android piece, there's going to be some Android code, which is there. In the example app itself? Or um, actually, no, there won't, because there's nothing happening on this side. Right. Yes. So, okay. So we have, we have Java from the package, from yep. the plugin itself. That's going to be our provide the functionality that we're looking for on the Java side. Yes, and we don't need to access any of the platform-specific stuff in our example project, because that's being done in the plugin. Right, so it should okay. be ideally the the plugin will sort of abstract and encapsulate that whole mm -hmm. that whole mess and just give you a nice nice clean Dart interface. Yes. Um, okay. And okay, so let's go back to. So if you were to go into your barometer plugin .java, mm -hmm. you could just we could easily create a dummy method which would be returned get barometer reading or mm -hmm. get get height of mercury, or I don't have a major in physics, so you're going to have to <laughs> fill in here. I've got high school sure. physics. How does that sound? So we, in this is the me on method calls what gets called when Dart comes a knocking. It's like, hey, I have a method that I want you to go execute mm -hmm. and tell me the result. And you're going to have some sort of switch statement, right. which will check to see what the name of the method is, right? Which we kind of do right now. We have yep. this. If, uh, there and so I can add a method here, and I think I can have this be whatever I want. So I could be a like string, uh, or a string. Uh, what is it? Float, double. Double. Float. Get barometer. I can't believe I've forgotten all my Java. It only took four months. Um, <laughs> and we can just have it return. Do you know what appropriate barometric pressure is? I had no idea. Uh. uh okay. 79 millimeters. 79, there we go. Uh, and then we can come down here. We could say if that equals uh, get barometer. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm, I'm going to make it the same name as the method, but I don't, this can be almost anything I want it to. Yep. If I was coding you know, badly, I could have, um, I could say double. Actually, reading. Let's be scientific. Mm -hmm. Get barometer, just like that. And then I could say. You're going to want to put that result dot success. And can we put any type in there? I wonder. I think because you can return primitive. Here we go. What kind of types can you return That's across the boundary? That's a very good question. So let's do a little platform channels for a second. Because I've seen this. There's a table, and right there. Let me, let me check this go. up so everybody can see it. So. There's no shared memory 
nope. between Dart and the native side. So when you talk about like multiple threads in mm -hmm. Dart, it's not actually threads, they're isolates. Right. And isolates, no shared memory. Everything is complete, well. Hence the term isolated. isolate, right. Yeah. And, and so all of the data that you're going to send to the native side and all the data you're gonna get back has to be in these method channel mm -hmm. calls. That's how it happens, right? And so there's a table of translation here for if you give method a method channel this Dart type, it'll get spat out on the other side as this Java type or this iOS type. Um, so we got maps and lists at a higher level, but mm -hmm. we have all of the different types of... You know, in Dart, I usually just go int. I don't yeah. usually use u int 8 list or int 32 list. Mm -hmm. And so this, I think, is cool. Like, you can actually just pass a map from Dart, mm -hmm. and you get a hash map in Java, or and then it's, you don't have to, like, stringify things into JSON. So I could sort of just like hash. That. I could, okay. Um, okay. So we're back. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, we're so we're going to use a double. Yes, yeah, so let's just return our reading like that. And okay, result of success. That. And a success is overloaded, taking different. Oh, shoot. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> I was never going to get to my code. So let's put a return in there. And I'll take this out for a second. Put a return in here. And in five minutes, I'm going to be pulling up the Firebase Admon plugin to remember how I did this stuff <laughs> before so, three months ago. We don't have to talk about that, though. Can you um, use switch statements in Java on strings? You can, but I don't. Because it would be case string, and we're using this. So this would be a string, mm -hmm. I assume. We can go look. This is all open source. We can go look this up, too. Um, and go find out if this method is, is a string or not. We got two, two, two pieces, two yeah. statements, it's totally fine. Okay. So here, if call equals get barometer, mm -hmm. so we could go back into our... Dirty dark code. Yep. And we could go in to our plugin. Yep. And we could say, we're already awaiting in here. So we could actually call a brand new... Oh. Because this is static get, you could create a brand new um, getter for parameter, right? Yeah, you that's don't true. need to put it in there. That's a good point. The magic of cutting and pasting. Parameter reading. Mm -hmm. or actually, just call it reading. reading. Um, and so we're going to invoke here. I got to give it the string that it's going to be looking for. Yep. Right. So get parameter which we're going to have to name mm -hmm. in a second. That's not going to be a string at all. And you could probably just directly return that await statement, right? Oh, yeah. Which Although I might want to put a breakpoint in here later. That's true. And that would be a more mm -hmm. convenient way to do it. So let's do, oh, not a string. Double. Double. Uh, reading. Yeah, I'm totally going to re renaming this stuff in a second. But that should... That should work, right? And then we could go up into mm -hmm. main and say... We can go back to our example, yep. We could do, let's just print it to the log just real quick. Um, you, you can do print await, I think, can you? I just, yeah, or I'm sure. Short. But I, then I like to format short, it, and then I... My coding, my coding shortcuts are ugly. There you go. That's all right. Uh, barometer. My typing is ugly right now. Um, reading like that. That's got to be a wait, right? Yep. So that we actually wait for this to come back, and then we could just do print reading because of string interpolation, right? Nice. Like that. Okay. All right. Let's watch this crash. <laughs> Such faith. <laughs> Um, so you're going to have to build, is this going to build a plugin at the same time if you build I an example? I don't think so. Way back when, when I first started, I didn't realize that Hot Reload was only rebuilding the Dart code. And I didn't understand why my Java no. changes weren't showing up. So, um, fun fact, Hot Reload is a Dart phenomenon. It does not work with the JVM, um, uh, at least in my experience. So. Um, if you re change your platform code, which we have just done to add that method, um, 
in the Java file itself, you do have to do a full app rebuild with Gradle kicking on and all the rest of it. I don't even think you can do a full restart. Because that's not going to trigger. Yeah. Because I don't think that's going to trigger a full rebuild. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you lose the benefits of hot reload once you start to modify your platform. I, I don't, which yeah. kind of makes sense. Yeah, like how to, is that going to be that useful if you're doing, you're not doing UI at that point necessarily. You're. Um, I really hope you're not. Yeah, <laughs> spitting out widgets from your Java code. Um, you, what state do you keep? That, oh, totally worked. Oh, look at that, 79.0. Congratulations. Code victory. All right. Um, I'm su again, surprised my code works in the first try, always. I, I get... I, I fear we're going to spend the next 45 minutes trying to work out how to get barometer ratings from the, <laughs> from, from from the, the Android Java. platform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've forgotten all other languages here in Dartland. Now, um, so let's... Sensor manager awaits. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk about this, though. So we mm -hmm. want a nice, fluttery, idiomatic interface for our barometer stuff, right? So do we want to have a getter or do we want to have a stream of readings that you can then subscribe so, to? Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, if you simply want to display a barometer reading mm -hmm. on, say, a page that you're showing the weather, mm -hmm. which isn't live updating, one reading is fine. Let's say we were using this to do some funky things while we're hiking then you would probably not want to use a method channel. You, you would want to use an event channel. And you would want to have on the Android side some sort of sensor listener, mm -hmm. which would pull the sensor every few seconds. And the event channel will actually just give you an open stream of data, which I think you can then just listen to on the Dart side and handle it through streams. So we got a couple of ways of doing it. Both use okay. cases make sense. We still have to actually access the sensor, though. <laughs> um, but bear in mind, there's two ways of doing it. You don't have to do the polling on the uh, Dart side if you want yeah. to get continuous pieces. You can just listen for a stream of data. Okay. And I'm not sure if the... I know things like the um, GPS sensor, you can just get Android to subscribe to the sensor, da uh, the sensor data and it will it's handle like the callbacks. It's like sensor listeners and yeah. things like that. Okay. I've never accessed the barometer, so I have no idea if you get the same. The magic of web searches. Let's see... Now make sure you get the right version of Android. Yeah. Okay, motion sensors. Fewer sensors. devices have barometers. That's mm. another thing we have to do. What happens when you query a device that... Humidity sensor. Really? What on earth? Don't you? Okay, rabbit hole. Yeah, okay. What are we going to do if you run this in a phone that doesn't have a barometer? You're going to need That's some way of point. returning a... Uh, we could either have another method, which is check for barometer. Is barometer available, kind of a getter, something. Yeah. But I'm not sure what happens. What happens if a an exception is thrown on the on the Android side of things? That's another thing we should look at. That's a good question. Because hmm. we might have, do we handle because things are completely isolated. I'm not sure what method channels. We could answer that on. question right now. Actually, hold on. Um, you can just go throw an exception. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Valid argument. Exception. You haven't forgotten all of your uh, Java code. Well, I gotta go look because I'm doing this in a text editor. I gotta go look up the import to have. Please tell me that's actually in Java and it's not. Okay, thank God. There you go. Um, if it was like a C plus plus thing. So that illegal argument exception. I assume I need to do this. Illegal argument impression. Uh, there you go. And let's just put a breakpoint in there and see what happens. So you have to completely stop and restart? Yeah. If, we had, if I had done any preparation for this episode at all, I would have uh, a better setup. We could open it with Android Studio. Uh, I 
build, 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 build. Yeah. Throw new illegal argument exception. Dart, new, optional. We may have to take a timeout. Java, up. new, not so optional. <laughs> Hashtag should have used yeah. Kotlin. There you go. Might have to take a timeout and get my tools in order here. Double unreachable statement. Oh my goodness. Oh, is it checking for that? Okay. Okay. One, All right, more, one more attempt. One more attempt, and then it's timeout time. Fingers crossed. It's only so many lines of code I just added, right? I mean, so can of code you took out. <laughs> there you go. And it pushes them there over, we go. and so now it's going to start making that call. Let's go into it. Failed to get platform version. Ah, oh. are those your legal argument exception? It's logging some stuff. Okay. Fail to handle method call. Oh, you, can you wrap that in a try except? Maybe it throws a. Uh, I bet. Let me have a look. Yeah. I, some research. I bet this is in the docs. It's probably, I mean, it's probably on GitHub too, right? Fail to um, handle method call. Yeah. And the docs were wrapping things and we're looking for on platform exception. There so when we throw an exception on the platform side, you receive a platform exception on the, uh, on the Dart side. Okay, cool. so that's. And got, I mean, it's Java Lang illegal argument exception. So it got the right one. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take out my silly code here. Take this out. Don't need you anymore, right? Um, yep. Okay. And let's go back to looking at our sensors. Motion sensors. So environmental sensors are the ones we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the one, I think. That's our pressure, right? So yep. sensor framework. So we want to subscribe to a sensor event listener. Oh, this is good. Looks like these have been available for a long time. So certainly all the way down through Flutter's API compatibility. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now we got some stuff. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope we don't have to ask for uh, permission. Oh, that's a good point. Code. We could be here for a while. That's true. Although if we're building for the latest one, it shouldn't like, let us uh, ask for it, right? Yeah, but we so. have to write all that code for asking. Okay, so sensor manager, where are you? Does your emulator emulate <laughs> That's a good sensors? question. <laughs> we'll find out in a hurry. Um, so let's get sensor manager here. Mm -hmm. And whoop. actually, wait a second. There's Andy. Uh, oh, look at that. Ah, look at that. Okay. Cut and paste. Yeah. And that's where we use that type. Okay, so we're going to do. We're going to get a system sensor manager, and then we're going to ask it for a sensor of type pressure. And we're only going to want to do this when you make the request, probably, because otherwise it might fail mm. at boot up if the phone doesn't support right. barometers. So just... Okay, what did I just cut and paste here? It's always a good thing to know. So these will be my privates here. Okay. And I've got sensor manager up there, but I don't have sensor. Probably could have guessed that one. I am uh, just so impressed that you're coding this in a text editor and not with, with, with <laughs> sure, no, it has IDE support. I just yeah. wish it was activated. <laughs> 
Oh, I know. I need to get. Oh. I need to get our corporate registration oh. code. I was well, waiting for that to pop up. Wait, Google can't afford to buy you a license. We can. <laughs> I just haven't taken the forty-five seconds to do it. So, if we have a shame indicator on the show, now is the time to uh, point it at me. Just we'll edit that bit out. Before. All right. <laughs> so, we do pay for our software here. Trust me. It's <laughs> quite a bit of it. Uh, okay. Um, go back here. So, in my Get these here. So I'm going to go get the sensor manager. Welcome to the boring sensor manager show. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? We have our sensor manager, system service. Mm -hmm. You're looking for type barometer or pressure. And what is that going to do if it fails? But we'll find out. Yeah. I did experiment with attaching an Android debugger to the uh, project once it was running, mm -hmm. and I have had exp I have had that work in the past. So I know it's possible to be developing a plugin in IntelliJ, not even Android Studio, but use the you know attached to, to attach to Android process, and have that work out. Okay. So I know that's possible. Um, okay. So let's stop. Collaborate and listen. Okay. M sensor manager. Missing anything? It's like doing interviews. Well, yeah, you've got to like you got to register it. For, you got to register the listener. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's a way to get it without registering for the listener. Maybe the sensor manager has, because if you're only going to get one value, you're going to register for the listener, get one value, and then register at that point. The right. listener. Yeah. So there may be a synchronous way of. So you give it. So this. this would be where our IDE completion would be really helpful. Yeah. So here's, I mean, there's the interface for sensor event listener, which I yep. assume are these two bits mm -hmm. down here. So we can put those. Let's just make sure that I'm able to get yeah. what I think I'm able to get. So if this doesn't crash, then the Java code must have worked, which is a fun phrase to say. Oh, oh. There we go. Ah, oh, why did I call you final? Yeah, when you uh, when you don't have hot reload, you miss it. Can't miss. I cannot find symbol sensor manager. Ah. Interesting. This might be a good point to stop and get our uh, system set up to make your yeah, life easier. It might, you think? Now, now, yeah, let's let's cut to uh, cut to our guest segment actually with Chin Mei. That would be a perfect time to do that. That'll give me a chance to get this set up a little better um, and get a little more, you know, really good technical content for the show. All right, so cut. Yeah. There we go. All right. Hey, so I'm now here with Chin Mei from the engineering team. Um, and he's an engineer working on a lot of things relating to Flutter and Dart internals. Right. So say hello to the internet. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Chinmay, and I work on the Flutter engine team. Uh, and so I, I work on making sure Flutter runs on as many platforms as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a person working on Flutter, I actually don't write too much Dart code. I, <laughs> it's, it's mostly C, C++, Objective-C. You're down on the low I, levels of things, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, about three years ago at this point, uh, like uh, I initially brought uh, Flutter up on uh, Mac and iOS. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... It's like uh, the very first time you were there when it was like... Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, when it was called something else and, <laughs> uh, and uh, when it only ran on Android. And so, okay, yeah, uh, so I've been at it for a while. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'm new to this, so hopefully uh, <laughs> this chat is, is useful and cool. usable. Cool. Um, so this is, this is something I like to ask people. What is something that 
the public might not know that much about or not, might not have awareness of that you really wish they did? That, something that might help them a lot that maybe they don't know about yet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Flutter uh, like, uh, has a, uh, like the, the Flutter engine and the framework mm -hmm. has a lot of uh, profiling and uh, debugging and instrumentation tools uh, that uh, that allow you to go down to the very lowest levels of the system and uh, uh, and also give you a uh, uh, a very high level overview of what the Flutter application is doing, okay. and this in this includes stuff like the observatory uh, and so uh, or the uh, the performance overlays or uh, or or many like there are a lot of debugging and profiling tools uh, like out there, uh, uh, and they are documented uh, that uh, that. That mm -hmm. I wish uh, that <laughs> that that, uh, that uh, we could do a better job of, sure. uh, of highlighting. Which which is my job, um, mm -hmm. and which I'm now trying to foist it on you. Um, so you mentioned two in particular. So the the um, the performance overlays. That's something that you trigger in your code. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so uh, when you launch a Flutter application. Mm -hmm. You can tell your uh, tell the application to throw up an overlay, uh, uh, like on top of the, uh, okay. like on top of your Flutter view. That's and one of those. It's just it's like from. Um, it's it's just system. It's, Chrome. There's uh, like a uh, thing you import uh, and you. It's it's on Material App. You can just say okay. uh, show performance uh, enable performance overlays. So just one call. Just and one call. Okay. Just one boolean. Like uh, like set that to true. And if you're not using the Material App widgets, uh, like you can add them. Uh, like add them as layers. And so okay. um, so. Uh, there are tons of ways of enabling them, and all of them are super easy. Okay. Uh, and so, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, and then the observatory was the other one that you mentioned. The observatory uh, is another one. And so, every time you launch your application in uh, uh, in either the debug or the profile modes, mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, like the the, obser uh, the service protocol starts up, mm -hmm. and the service protocol is available uh, via a socket on the device, which is automatically mm -hmm. port forwarded for you. Right. Uh, and okay. So uh, this doesn't happen uh, in the release app. So it's running on the emulator or on device, like or a little on the server. Device, yeah. And if you say Flutter Run, mm -hmm. uh, the tools automatically port forward. Uh, 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 oh, and it spits out that line that's like, yeah. "Hey, I just started the observatory on port whatever. Right. Here's a link to it." Yeah. And so the observatory is mm -hmm. just a UI uh, over the service protocol. Okay. And you can do a lot of cool things with the service protocol, uh, like debugging, profiling, uh, viewing the timeline uh, uh, of, of like, uh, as the application is rendering its frames. Oh. And uh, uh, we use it, but uh, developers can use it too. So the service protocol is extensible over, uh, and so using an RPC mechanism, you can add your own uh, development and profiling. You could like, kick things out from your app. Right, and so uh, like you could say, hey, this is a custom service protocol endpoint that my application understands, and you can mm -hmm. build tooling, uh, uh, like uh, like tooling that's specific to your application. Uh, and of course, this only runs uh, on uh, debug and profile mode. Mm -hmm. So when you release your app, none of the machinery is even in your binary. Okay. Uh, like it gets compiled out, and so which is why we have three different uh, 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 modes. So Flutter has debug, profile, and release modes. Oh, okay. Right? And so debug mode is for very fast application development. Mm -hmm. So you have hot reload and uh, uh, and tons of other uh, uh, like features that uh, that allow you to uh, like quickly edit code and then uh, uh, and show and have it sh uh, be shown on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, profile mode is. Extremely similar to what the uh, uh, like, uh, uh, <laughs> is extremely similar to release mode, okay. except it has observatory and all the other profiling tools in uh, uh, built in. So it's AOT compiled as opposed to using yeah. a VM, right. but it's instrumented as well. Right, it's, uh, okay. it's, it's instrumented. It has a service protocol up and running, okay. uh, and. Uh, uh, before, uh, so uh, if you want to get a good approximation of what your user is going to see, mm -hmm. but you also want to be able to uh, gain deep insight into or like what the application is doing on okay. the user's machine, you would use profile mode. And uh, yeah, uh, and the overhead is fairly minimal, but. So you're changing it a little bit by observing it, as they right. say, but yeah, as little exactly. as possible. Yeah, it, 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 like nothing's free, but. Uh, sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, and th that's. Uh, those are those are some good tips, definitely. I'm going to go check out Observatory as soon as we're done filming here, because um, mm -hmm. I have used it once when I was working on uh, something that used an isolate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and uh, uh, so uh, when you launch the app, mm -hmm. uh, it should say Observatory is running on port 
uh, or blah. Mm -hmm. It's actually running on the device and it's port forwarded for you. Okay. So it, uh, like, just open up the browser and go to that URL. Uh, and it's just a web page uh, that's got all the stuff It's just a web page, it. yeah, with, with, with everything on it. And okay. and if you don't want to use it, and if you want to extend it, you, you could using the service okay. protocol. So it's just a UI over the service protocol. Okay. All right, so let me, let me change topics here. So mm -hmm. a while back in one of our episodes, I just kind of tossed out a phrase that's been haunting me. Oh. Um, I, met, I referred to Dart as a statically dispatched language, which of course isn't really true. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been, there's been some teasing, because uh, of course Dart is object oriented, it has po polymorphism in it. You can't have polymorphism if you're just using static dispatch, mm -hmm. correct? So I was curious, I know I have heard people say that there is some static dispatch that's used in Dart. It's right. faster, ideally you'd love to use it mm -hmm. as much as possible, right? right? So are there some instances where Dart can say, I don't have to go look up a method anywhere. I know that this is the this is the pointer to the function I'm going to use. Just right. there it is. Right. So uh, uh, like Dart has two uh, like, like has different methods of execution. There's mm -hmm. the uh, there's the JIT mode execution, and then there's the AOT mode execution. So uh, in 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 AOT comp uh, in the AOT mode, and that's the release builds that get that's the release ahead of the time profile compiled, and release right. builds. Okay, uh, profile and release. Right. So uh, like in that world, uh, the the Dart AOT compiler has. Uh, uh, like knows that all the source code that can potentially execute on the uh, like on the system is is known upfront. Like you uh, and so uh, no hot reloading anything. Yeah, so not hot. Uh, yeah. So no hot reloading or anything. It's not going to change after it's being deployed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it get uh, like because it knows that the system is uh, 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 like is closed. It can make more assumptions about uh, like uh, what's polymorphic versus what's not, mm -hmm. and it can make better decisions about uh, uh, like uh, better decisions about optimization. Okay. Now. Having said that, uh, uh, like I wouldn't uh, uh, try to guess what the Dart, <laughs> what the AOT <laughs> compiler, or or, like, or, or, or the uh, uh, like, or the chip mod execution. As, as people have seen the show before, no guessing is kind of my jam. So, <laughs> right. uh, but please go on. Right, and so uh, uh, like, uh, again, using the tools that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. like the observatory, uh, the, uh, the tracing tools, uh, and like e even uh, being able to add your own traces, mm -hmm. like, you can get a. Uh, the, Flutter makes it very easy mm -hmm. for you to uh, uh, like uh, like for you to tell exactly which part of your uh, code base is uh, is maybe not as performant as it could be. Okay. And uh, 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 and once you identify that slow bit of code, there are multiple ways of executing it in the right spots, right? So uh, uh, if you uh, like, if you're doing expensive file I/O or mm -hmm. uh, just expensive work, you can uh, uh, you can shun that over to uh, another isolate, which run like which uh, which doesn't uh, uh, block your frames, right? Okay. So if that's that's the version of running it on another thread for Dart, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, or uh, if you're doing ex expensive cryptography, or <laughs> as we or, all do from time to time, right. or, or or anything that uh, that requires uh, uh, talking to uh, uh, native libraries on the device, uh, probably uh, Java, uh, like Java or Objective C or Swift or mm -hmm. C++ libraries, uh, like you can just uh, you can do that using platform channels, uh, uh, and so. Uh, I guess my advice would be to not uh, uh, guess uh, w which parts of your code base are slow. <laughs> but to actually go and look and have real knowledge of right. what's going and, on. And, uh, and again, uh, like, I, I think we do a fairly good job of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, providing you with all the tools uh, that allow you to tell uh, uh, that allow you to tell exactly which parts of your uh, uh, of your code uh, are not as performant uh, and. I guess maybe we don't do uh, the best job of uh, uh, showing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Which would be my job, thanks. <laughs> Thrown under the bus by my own guest. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're great. I, I, no. Um, you, you mentioned something uh, that I also wanted to talk about while we're here, and we all probably only have a little bit of time left. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you mentioned platform channels, which is what we've been working with in today's episode, doing this plugin for a barometer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm curious, like, I have some knowledge of platform channels. I worked on the Firebase uh, AdMob plugin. That was how I got on the Flutter team uh, to begin with. That was sort of my little gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I've, I've done that. We're working with it today. And I sort of understand platform channels. And I was going to see how far I can get trying to explain it mm -hmm. before you have to stop me because I'm wrong. So this, this will be a fun little experiment, okay. see how far I can get. So OK, I, I build an app. And I reference plugins in my pub spec. Mm -hmm. So Flutter knows, hey, I need this additional code built into my app. Right. right? And so a, pl a plugin is a package that has not only some Dart code, but it also has 
uh, Android libraries potentially, mm -hmm. uh, has iOS libraries, static libraries that might come right. in a pod, a pod file, and it can have classes and assets for those native platforms as well, mm -hmm. right? So when those are built, all that stuff goes into my app right. proper. And so in my app, I might call into a package uh, for the barometer. So I'm going to call in to say, hey, I'd like to listen to the barometer, please. Right. Right. And so my barometer package registers a method channel mm -hmm. that it creates. And it gives it a name so right. I can get back to it later if I want to. Right. Yeah. And, and I know it on both sides. And then magic starts to happen. So <laughs> there's, there's a registrar. Right that's in charge of managing all of these method channels, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got that part, that's pretty good. Um, and in when I create a method channel, it goes and looks for a class with a matching name right. to what's registered with my package, is that right? Uh, with the channel name. The channel name. Right. Okay. And so it'll go and spin up the class on the other side, the native class in mm -hmm. Java or iOS yeah, or you know Android or iOS, and that class then has some kind of a listener that's there, and it's in mm -hmm. another thread. Uh, right. So uh, w when you launch your Flutter application, mm -hmm. uh, uh, your main Dart code mm -hmm. is running on uh, what we call the root isolate, okay. and that isolate isn't running on the platform's main thread. So it's a separate thread from the UI thread, as right. we would call it. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, like the uh, uh, the Cocoa Touch's main thread or the uh, the Android platforms like main thread. Mm -hmm. So your Dart code isn't isn't running on the main thread. Okay. Right? And so uh, well, that's good. I can't block the UI. That's nice. Right. Uh, uh, and so, uh, uh, but most we, we find that when you want to talk to the underlying platform, mm -hmm. uh, like most of these APIs aren't really thread safe, uh, right? And so, so what what we do is when you make uh, uh, calls uh, like you, uh, through the platform channels, mm -hmm. uh, like you'll find that all these calls are async. Right, right, and that's because uh, like all these calls, uh, the, uh, all the call call arguments and mm -hmm. the responses are marshaled and sent across, uh, like over to the platform thread. Okay, right, and then when when the plugin says, okay, uh, I've done the work I need to do, mm -hmm. uh, and and the plugin itself can use. Uh, uh, can can do this work on any thread at once. So if it wants to go spawn a background right. thread, it's it's just regular platform code at right. that point and right. go do what it wants exactly. to a certain degree, right? Right. right. Uh, and so uh, uh, the the argument marshaling and the uh, 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 marshaling and unmarshaling of the arguments and its responses mm -hmm. are handled by the platform plugins mechanism. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, and so. Uh, and the way uh, 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 the the engine, the Flutter engine, mm -hmm. disambiguates uh, different instances of plugins and uh, uh, is uh, is using the channel name. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can have a plugin, and I can have like four different channels, and right. as long as I give them different names, right. Flutter can keep those straight. Mm -hmm. And Probably don't want to, but I could if I wanted. You, yeah, you could, and uh, and so. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't do this often. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, or at all. You're rarely called upon to just you know brain dump uh, mm -hmm. these architectural things, right. but um, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, as I said, uh, uh, the calls that are made on the uh, the Dart uh, mm -hmm. the, the root isolates thread are sent over to the platform thread, and then its response is sent back over. That's okay, right. and so it has to be done like these messages go back and forth. Mm -hmm. There is no shared memory between the two, correct? Uh, like, no, there is no shared memory. No. And that's true of Dart isolates in general, right? Yes. Like that's one of the rules. Right. There's no shared memory. It's only this message passing right. architecture. And, uh, yeah, because uh, the, the thread that this runs on, mm -hmm. uh, the Dart, I, I, the root isolates mm -hmm. uh, code runs on, is uh, like again you, uh, the uh, the Flutter uh, application developer didn't spawn it for us, and so the oh, okay. engine spawned it uh, on its own, and so. Uh, like, so the engine spins it up and then it goes in. It enters your main right. on that thread. Right. And okay. so uh, uh, actually, uh, when your Flutter application launches, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the Flutter engine spawns three main threads, uh, which is the uh, what we. Uh, so this isn't the platform's main <laughs> thread. This is what we refer to as the UI thread. Okay. Uh, which is where the root isolate start code runs. Sure. Uh, we spawn a GPU thread. Okay. Uh, where uh, the, this is the thread on which we talk to all uh, all the operations that uh, that want to talk to the GPU run on, okay. right? And so, uh, and then there's the I/O thread, which uh, which can uh, uh, 
uh, read uh, uh, like image assets, uh, like, uh, like uh, uh, which does I/O, mm -hmm. but it also can talk to the GPU thread to do async texture uploads, and it just makes uh, it, interesting. It, so it just makes uh, makes things a whole lot uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, easier, but again, these threads are spawned <laughs> for you. But uh, you don't have to really think about you them. You don't have to think about them. It's and just like the three trees, right? You right. really think about widgets. You don't think about elements and render objects most right. of the time, right? Right, and uh, they're just done for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you want to run platform-specific code, mm -hmm. we realize that uh, uh, because you don't because <laughs> you, you don't spawn the threads, it might be unexpected for you to get a platform callback on a thread that you didn't you didn't know existed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so uh, uh, so we uh, uh, we launch that uh, we run that code for you on the platform thread, okay. um, and and again there's also a, a thread pool for the VM to do its job. So uh, the, there's quite a few things, and uh, and things start to get interesting when you have multiple Flutter views uh, uh, like within your application. Oh goodness! Right, and so uh, it's pretty cool. Though. Yeah, I've never I never even tried that. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have probably gone way over the time allotted for this, but this has been really cool. That's a lot of low-level knowledge um, for me and hopefully our viewers. So thank you for appearing on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and we're really gonna fun. yeah we're gonna cut back to me and Matt working on the plugin, and we're back. All right, so that was some fun with Chinmay, who had a lot of inf interesting information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Font of information is Chimay. Yeah, um, always happy to get the internals because um, that always helps. So I have loaded us back up in that time. Um, while you were watching me talk to Chinmay, I was actually also here working on getting this loaded up in Android Studio. Cloned. <laughs> um, and so now I, have a, I have the right context for the Java sources, and all of that is, appears to be working. So, so we're all working now nicely in IntelliJ, and mm -hmm. everything is good. Yes. Okay. So I can get back to the bugs in the Java code. Mm -hmm. um, so sensor service, let's get that imported. Correct. Get default sensors bugging me about the Android version um, mm -hmm. because apparently Android A and B uh, API levels didn't have sensors. Um, and in the example code that I pasted in here, it's calling get system service. And in the example, uh, let's see where I was with the example. This. This is taking place in an activity, which uh, my plugin is not. So you need to get access. I to need the to context. get an activity, so I need because mm -hmm. I need a context. Fortunately, the registrar, um, this and this register with method is the first method that gets called uh, on your plugin to get you ready to receive further calls. It provides this registrar, and that can get you the activity, the activity that Flutter is running in. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to keep a hold of. Uh, the registrar for future use. Cool. And I'll set it right here. Registrar equals registrar. Am I misspelling registrar all over the place? Oh, that's a static. I can't do that. Um, Do you want to hold on to the register or do you want to hold no. on to the, uh, the context? What I need to do is, so this is a static method that's going to be making an instance of this class. Oh, that's a static method. So right. I need to have a constructor down here that takes a registrar. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I can just take an activity, just like that. And I can change this. Um, being the registrar to actually, you know what? I'll keep it just in case there's other registrar based things that I yep. want to do. So now I'll keep that. And so while we're talking about this, the registrar is um, sort of the manager of the platform, um, the method channels that you're going to be using. Um, it's the thing that you register your channels with that has all the plumbing inside to handle the uh, mm -hmm. setup and comps. And exactly. Okay. Some class has to sort of be in charge of that and say, oh, you want this one with this string? Here's this one that matches it. Um, so we can take that out. And then here, I just pass in. Okay. I'm going to be really good at typing registrar by the time this is over. And now down here, I can say, Oh, I wonder if active, active context. context would be even better. And then an extra parenthesis.
parentheses. Hmm. Okay. And I think that'll do it. Am I missing? Do I have any other errors? I've got one. Hold on. Oh, this is this is upset about the API level. So all times, all types of why ways this could current, crash on me. Why is our current min API one? That's a very good question. And I shouldn't. Was it eighteen or sixteen? <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, let's see if I can just ignore this for now and press on. Oh, oh, now Dart's yelling at me. That's definitely not a good thing. What is Dart upset about? Oh, I'm missing a file. That is what it's yelling about. I'm too happy about. Hold on a second. I need to go resurrect something from our previous instance of the project in uh. IntelliJ's other IDE. Um, let me just put this back in. So this is the method that you saw me doing earlier for reading. I was going to put it right back in. It got lost in translation when I remade the project for... Mm -hmm. Android Studio. recap what we've just done. So you have added in um, registering a sensor manager. Mm -hmm. Just to see if I can do that without yeah. it freaking out on me. That's all I'm really trying to do. I want to rename your accelerator to <laughs> pressure. A barometer. There you go. Okay. A barometer. So it just ran this code okay. and we're okay. So let me change this to um, barometer because that is the correct name. And so for this, we're going to be registering. If we go back to, we need to register a listener. Yep. And this will be interesting. So let's. So we're going to want to register a listener. Mm -hmm. And you could be clever. You could register a listener, and you could take several barometer readings mm -hmm. and average them out, for example, if you wanted to make sure, because sometimes there are noisy signals. So you could just take the first one and return it. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can handle this. Mm -hmm. But it's the sensor delay. It'd be interesting to see how many. There is going to be a significant delay in registering, and then right. there, significant as in, I don't know, hundreds of milliseconds or seconds. It depends on. But they're asynchronous, right? Yeah, but they're asynchronous, mm. so it will show up in your UI eventually. Let's Where are you going to register this listener? That's a good question. Probably when you do the on method call, you could set everything up, get the numbers, then tear everything down, and then return the value. That might not be optimal, That's, but it should work. Hmm, that might be difficult to pull off without. Oh, you need to register a list. I'm wondering if we should set up a separate function to initialize the barometer. Mm -hmm. And then later, I mean, ideally, we'd be subscribing, I think, to a stream and doing it that way. But don't you have to, you have to, don't you have to implement a, a couple of um, inter don't you have to implement an interface for the list for the sensor listener? You do. So we can go into we're already in there actually, and mm -hmm. so this uh, implements okay. that we can do. We could do a, an anonymous class, mm -hmm. I guess, as well. Oh, good God! I've already got. Ah. <sighs> It's been a fun day for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can put those methods down here. Mm -hmm. Does command end work for? There you go. Implement methods. Implement both That's of good. those. So we got them. And so. You've got get barometer. We could say, let's mm. say we have an initialized barometer that sets it up. Mm -hmm. And then we could just have a. Let's see, float values here. I think it's the first one that, they're inter that we're interested in. We could just have a float that's kind of hanging out in here that's um, private float um, latest reading, like that. Okay. So you can set up the listener. We can just keep that updated. And then when you call in to get oh, 
Oh, Sue. So. But what happens if the phone doesn't support that sensor, if you're going to do it on construction time? So we're not, we wouldn't be doing it in construction time, we'd be doing it on an initialized call. Okay. And that could conceivably return false if we wanted it to. Oh, so you want to have a separate method which says initialize, right. then you want to call for the reading, and mm -hmm. then you're going to have a dispose? A clean, you know, shut, clean you know, up. disconnect or something yep. like that. Okay, that seems reasonable. Okay. So, all right, so we want to have Boolean. Mm -hmm. And that would do this bit. And then it would also do this other bit that I'll steal right out of this. Register this listener. listener. Mm -hmm. And that part, what are we doing? Okay. The sensor delay normal. What's that? We'll just leave it. We'll, 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 we'll fine tune that later on. Oh, it can't be this. It has to be the registrar.active context, right? Because that's probably going to be the context, is it? All right, let's go out and actually look at the method here. Sort of ironic that the, the trouble we're running into has nothing to do with Flutter. It's just, <laughs> just regular code in Java. Um, register listener, yeah, that's a good point. So register listener, what does it take? Can I go into that? Okay. Sensor event listener. So it is this, because it's looking for the implementer of the listener, right? And this should be f fine. Helps okay. to use the right class. Oh, right. The right interface. Okay. So that worked. Um, and so that's going to register the listener, which is this. Mm -hmm. That is going to... Then start to call on right. msense changed, and you're just going to want to update your new private variable. Mm -hmm. So let's... Uh, latest reading, and let's just try the first thing in values. Wait a second. On sensor changed. It's an event. So this is different to. I think we're using a different. Uh, yeah, you're right. We're mm -hmm. using a different uh, because you, because you auto populated from the wrong. These are the ones that I need. Thingy, here. you need the other ones. Yep. Thingy is a technical term. Um, <laughs> there we go. So let's get the right methods into here, just like that. Import that correctly. Okay. Cool. So that's the accuracy changed, and mm -hmm. you want the event from the changed, right? Let's put that down here. And then I'll figure out exactly how to get data from the sensor event in a second. So it starts at zero. It'll increase every time there's a sensor change. Oh, OK. And then for this, we can start returning. Uh, that can cast for me, right? Uh, What's up? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, OK. Um, is that going to cast a pro? Oh, and it's a float anyway. So that's fine. Well, do you it's want to make that a double turn. rather than a float, just in case? Yeah. Okay, what else do I have here that could be causing me trouble? So this is going to return. Yeah, it's also yelling to me about the API level. So we can fix that in the manifest in a second. Mm -hmm. And so we have things that are happening. It'll be interesting to see which hits first, <laughs> yeah. the sensor event or your All probably. Right, let's, let's stop that. And so now in here, I have to make a 
And that's just going to be a regular method, right? Yep. Well, because you're not passing anything in, it could. Well, no, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a getter. Actually, it, is, it makes sense to be a getter. So we're still wiring up our. Method and let's initialize. We'll have to put this into the handler there. Okay, so we got that. Mm -hmm. Now we go back into our Java. And we're going to have a little bit in here to call that method. So if called method, this is horrible typing. Call method. So there's a little bit of boilerplate to communicate back and forth. Yeah. And this is it's, it's not too bad. This is an, an an interesting spot because these issues, like if you get a string wrong in one place and it's not wrong in the other, you're not going to catch that at run until runtime. Yes. Um, and then you're not going to quite know what's going on because things are just not going to get called. Yeah. Is it initialize or initialize power? Power. No, you're yeah. correct. Uh, return parameter like that. Do you want to await that? Uh, return. Sorry. We're going to report success like that. I'm still being yelled at, but I think it's for manageable reasons now. All right, I'm going to look up how to specify. Like I'm in the it's got it. Yeah, you want to look that up real quick sure. while I'm doing this. All right, let's see if there's anything I've forgotten. Uses SDK, I think. In your, it's not the manifest, it's the Gradle file, isn't it? The build app.gradle. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So it's app.gradle. You should check that, and you're gonna have um, min SDK version and target SDK version. Okay. Just a second. Did I have an old copy of this hanging out in memory? Let me go ahead and guess it's your build dot gradle. Min SDK version. This isn't an example. No, this is the correct one. Hmm. All right. Let's try this one more time. This is when it crashes because we don't actually have a barometer. Yes, that worked. <laughs> because it took the first reading, which is it. Well, let's put it this way. It didn't crash. There you go. Um, so let's see if we can at least... Um, let's see if we... Because we need some way to ask it for another version, right? So we need something we can tap on in our example. Well, we could just in the... Um, I'm thinking we need some way to say, hey, give me another value from the thing, right? So I was thinking of adding a button. Could do. Or you could just do a, um, you could have a stateful, you need a stateful widget for that, aren't you? You could have a stateful widget with a timer in it. It just updates mm -hmm. itself every X number of milliseconds. There, and then we'd have an on pressed. Mm-hmm. So this part I can just do now. It's the <laughs> my former life as a Java coder that I've completely <laughs> forgotten. Um, so we're going to give it a method that would be set. Oh wait, this should be. I'm going to be calling set state here. Yep. Come on. Now. There we go. Good. I love 
example, the auto formatter can tell you if you've coded everything correctly as far as closing your brackets and parentheses. Um, so let's make sure that I can do this. So I would go, can I do, mm. why are you printing the reading? Oh, you're currently printing it out. I just realized something. So our set state, you can't give it a future. No, you have to call another function which can take a future. Mm -hmm. So you can wait. You can await another function inside a set state. All right. So I can. So in the. Well, I can I can await and then call set state with the result, right? So I could do. Yes, I beg your pardon. So if you created a. Uh, what I can do here. Let's see if I can get this all. I butchered this so badly. <laughs> okay. Uh, coding without a net. All it's right. Um, all good. So this will be an async, which I believe I can do like that. And then I'll do an await uh, mm -hmm. barometer dot reading like that. So double reading equals. Mm -hmm. You could use far reading as well for. I can I'm do not going to be a uh, tight Nazi. <laughs> okay, set state. Oh, you're right. That is that should be final, actually, right? Um, set state, and then we'll give it. Um, and you just you're just going to want to update um, whatever the reading string is, right? So yeah, which we actually don't have in our state yet. Mm -hmm. So we need a double. the uh, the running and platform version if you just want to print out the uh, yeah let's give this reading a uh, starting value yeah that's a good point and then we can kill platform version we don't need that anymore mm -hmm. and we can change this to reading all right let's try that Uh, I'm not, have you restarted since you updated the uh, the Java code? I'm missing. Some, oh. oh, I'm missing a uh, children. to use column main access centered or something like that. Yeah. Get yeah. my column up. Um, main access size would be main access size max, I think. And then main access alignment. Mm -hmm. Center. There we go. So every time you hit the button, it's going to pull the. So it's going to initialize. Have you done initialize it here? Oh, did I forget to call the meet the the whole reason that we just did the thing? You may have put it in there and I missed it. <laughs> no, I think I did. So this is going to keep returning zero, um, which is sort of fine for right now. It's really low pressure in here. <laughs> Okay, so I can tap on that. It's going to keep returning zero. That's good. Let's actually initialize. Um, init platform state is where we'd want to do that. We can get rid of this, right? And mm -hmm. just do. Oh, wait. Um, initialize. 
We don't even need that value. The question anymore. is, do you even need to await it at that point? Because it's... Yeah, it's true. I don't really care. Yeah. All right, let's run this and see what happens. As I subtly shove the table forward <laughs> with my massive girth. <laughs> So close. I know. Syncing files. Let's see if it crashes. Okay. It's getting something. It's is going it, up. Is, is it night? Is it is it ninety seven or eighty seven or whatever? I, I just said. realized this is the 79. smallest font ever, and we're expecting people watching this. No, we just gonna they just assume phones. they just assume it works. <laughs> All right, it says sixty seven. It says sixty seven point zero. We're not making it up. We promise. Um, okay, so you, you, you could just make it quickly bigger and hot yeah. reload. <laughs> hot reload would actually work. In yeah, this you're case. right. <laughs> Style. Is, you know, flutter stuff. I can totally uh, I think do this you can, quick. You, can't you just do style, text style, dot font size? Uh, I was just going to do headline real quick. And oh, okay. Oh, good God. No, no I'm not. Let me just kill my... Uh, there we go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I used to know how to code. I really did. That looks good. This is one of my list, my wish list of features for the uh, the plugin. Is something to help with this when you make a change somewhere. Fix my brackets. And it's, yeah, I've just hosed the brackets completely and got myself in all kinds of trouble. Okay. Try this again. Okay. Oh my god, I just put it on. <laughs> Can everyone see the button text now? We <laughs> Wow. This is what happens when you're up with a sick kid. I'm gonna blame it on my child. Oh my god. Oh, it's the never-ending boring Flutter show. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, and I can mock because I'm not the one. You're not the one behind the keyboard. <laughs> the keyboard. Yeah. There we Yay. go. <laughs> I'm so, a Google engineer. I can change a font size. Okay. I do barometer readings. <laughs> okay, so, let's see if we can actually get what we're supposed to get out of the... Um, so in our Java code, if we can do that, then we'll have a nice little bow to put on this episode, at least for now. So we get a sensor event. What is a sensor event? Let's go look at that. Accuracy sensor values. Okay. So let's try. So event dot values dot first. Uh, if we were in Dart, we could oh, do yeah. first, right? So what? Type is that? Oh, you're killing me with this. Okay. That's not going to hot reload away, so we got to retry that. Why is values redlined? It's the it's the API oh, level. The API, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have an extensive description on this episode detailing the things that we uh, we didn't have time to stop and look up. Okay. Sense. Oh my gosh. A hundred and, you know, 1,013 sounds correct. No, I'm serious. 1,000, 1,013 sounds like C, C, C level. Can you mess with it? Did you ever see Emily and uh, the two Emilys do this with the, the accelerometers and one of their, well, I think it was an IO yeah. talk. Altitude meters. Can I mess directly with the... 
it's probably built in that that's the because that's the sea level so can we uh No, nope, same one. No, because the altitude is maybe different. So that's location, okay. Virtual sensors. Bar is there a barometer here? Okay. I feel as though we uh, we run some kind of search engine here that can be useful for, uh, for these things. Hmm. Android. I feel like people would have believed that that was true until you decided to question it. <laughs> with it in the emulator like where is it coming up with that value maybe it's built in by default and you have to add a key value type to update it Type pressure. Interesting. All right, I may just have to claim victory with 1013.25. Because, I mean, there's some of these that you can set the mag. mag. mag magnetometer? With Pico Tours, I want to say? Micro uh, if, if you say so. It's been a long time since I was a I think that might physics be major. I didn't think I'd say that twice in this episode, but there it is. Maybe in the next episode yeah. we can um, we can act, we'll plug in a real phone. There we go. And, All right, uh, we'll give it a shot. All right, I'm going to declare moderate victory on this one. So, what have we done today? We um, we hot rolled it and we loaded a piece of text. <laughs> thank God we had the segment with Chin Mei <laughs> to break up the, uh, the episode today. So, uh, what have we done? We created a new. Flutter plugin project. Yep. We did that on the command line. We then opened it in IntelliJ's idea. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and blame me for importing it incorrectly and opening it incorrectly. That way, I am sure it's possible to do that correctly in IntelliJ's idea. Um, we got pretty far defining an interface in Dart mm -hmm. for our plugin. And then we went into the Android code and added Java to actually go out and get a sensor value for us that we could then query in Dart. Uh, we talked with Chinmay about uh, Dart internals for plugins and static versus dynamic dispatch and the many ways that you can instrument and profile your apps, which is great. Um, he did not make any mistakes in the course of the episode. Um, then we finished up uh, in Android Studio, um, making sure that we could initialize the sensor manager properly attach ourselves as a listener. We got the activity mm -hmm. out of the registrar, which was uh, useful. And we're getting values now. Yep. And pulling them back into Dartland and displaying them with buttons that often have very large fonts, which is very important. <laughs> so so yeah. yeah, I mean, next time we'll probably want to look at sharpening up this interface, maybe doing the stream maybe, approach. Maybe finishing it up in iOS. And adding something on iOS. Um, I will endeavor not to be in the next episode. There will be. Uh, well, so someone else will have to clean up on my code. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm absent. <laughs> we'll see if I manage it. OK, <laughs> thanks for staying with us. Hopefully you got something out, uh, something good out of it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about uh, what you just saw. We certainly have some. <laughs> Um, and let us know what else you'd like to see in the series. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>